Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today's episode is going to be on carburetors, specifically uh, fuel overflow problems. So many of you have experienced this where you go to start up your car and fuel either leaks out from underneath this little cover here, or if you have a HS4 it'll leak out of this overflow pipe, or if you have an HIF carburetor you may have fuel leaking out of here. All these problems are related and there's four main categories Either you're getting grit into the carburetor, causing problems in the needle valve, fuel pressure problems, valve size problems, and the design of the sheet, the shape of the, uh, the seat here. So let's start off with uh, grit. Grit's an easy one. You know, it's got to be a brand new clean carburetor or a rebuilt clean carburetor with a fuel filter to keep the grit getting into these valves. Um, these valves are very small that the fuel has to flow into. So... Uh, it doesn't take much to block one of these up, so make sure you got a good filter on your carburetor for starters. So, next problem, problem number two, too much fuel pressure. So, all of the HS carburetors, so S for side float, um, this is an HS2, this one's an HS6, this one here is an HS4. All of the HS type carburetors, they need 1.25 pounds of fuel pressure max. No more pressure than that. If you have more than that, then you start running the risk of the valve in the carburetor not being able to stop the fuel from flowing. It's just that simple. Don't have too much pressure running through your fuel system, otherwise the, the fuel will just leak through the overflow. So that's problem number two. And the pressure for an HIF carburetor is two to three pounds. The HS4 or two, uh, 1.25 pounds max. So the third problem I mentioned was valve sizing. And what I mean by valve sizing is the diameter inside of here. That's the valve sizing. This is the valve. Diameter is the size. So in this book, this is the SU carburetor book supplied by SU. You can buy one of these from them directly. They're not that expensive. It lists everything they've ever built for these carburetors. So lids, uh, you know, there's the angle brackets, linkage pieces. And it has a section entirely related to floats and needle valves. In the back here, there is a section that talks about what was fitted when on all the cars that use their, their products. So if we flip through here, we get to the mini section. And we can see, for instance, here's all the 998s and 1000s. And it gives you engine size, year, etc. But we can come over here and we can look at needle valve. And you'll notice that... They list the same part number for all these cars, the VZX1100. And that references this rebuild kit with the 070 valve. There is also a 96 valve. And same thing with the HIF carburetors. They have a 070 and a 096. I would only consider using a 96 valve on a turbo application or a race application where you're running hard, high RPMs sustained. Any street car should be running a 070, and particularly on the HS carburetors, they are, again, limited to 1.25 pounds of pressure, so you must run the 070 in order to have success at keeping the fuel from leaking out of the, uh, out of the bowls. Now, on the HIF carburetors, they're designed for 2-3 to three pounds, so you'll find them with the 96 as well, and like on 1275 Metro type builds, but they do make them in a 070, so if you're running an HIF carburetor on a small bore motor, um, run the 070 because you'll have more success in keeping the, the fuel contained, especially if you're running a 1.25 pound uh, fuel pump. So now that we've gone through and talked about the sizes of the valves, let's zoom in on the valves themselves and the problem that I've run into, which is related to the seat and the way that the aftermarket suppliers are providing parts to us these days because the seat shape is actually very critical in allowing these carbs to uh, not leak fuel. So I've zoomed in on those two needle valves that were sitting on the bench here. The one on the left is an original 96th out jet. The one on the right is a reproduction 96th out jet. And you'll notice on the left here, you have very thin, narrow shine ring before it drops into the, the opening. The one on the right, you'll see this very large, ragged uh, chamfer. Do not use one of these chamfered valves straight out of the packet because the chamfer is too large and you'll have problems sealing with these designs. 
The original one is a radius to design. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw these two profiles on the whiteboard and we'll talk about the reason why you want to use the radius design over this chamfer design. So I've gone ahead and drawn that profile here. So this is the radius version. This is the chamfered version. Uh, you'll notice I wrote maximum 1.25 psi again for an HS carburetor. Same thing for this chamfered design. So on an original seat, because it's radius, the cone or the needle point, when it comes into this opening, the fuel pressure is pushing up against here. You know, it's pushing the float, which is pushing the needle valve, and it's pushing the needle valve against this radius seat. What happens is there's essentially two small points of contact along the radius or the outer ring of the valve. Because this is a radius edge, this is a straight edge, it's only going to contact in one spot. The new design, or I should say the bad design, um, by the aftermarket suppliers are giving us this chamfered edge. By giving us a chamfered edge, it increases the area of contact between the needle and the seat. So that's a problem because the fuel is coming in at 1.25 psi. The float is expected to be fighting against this 1.25 psi pressure with a radius seat. However, opening up the seat means that you have less pressure at each point of contact along this uh, chamfer here. So more more space for the needle to sit against means less pressure overall across the entire surface. So the formula for pressure, pressure is force over area, psi pounds per square inch. Um, if you change the area of contact, you reduce the effective pressure against it. So this is a problem and this is why these valves have a tendency to leak is because the actual pressure against the seat is diminished. Now, when we look at the difference in the two valve sizes here, we have the 0 0.70 versus the 0.96. Again, by making the diameter larger, we also reduce the effective um, seat pressure. So this is two reasons why uh, that valve is bad. One, that's a bad design. And two, if you put in the wrong valve size into your carburetor, uh, you'll, have, you'll have problems controlling the, the fueling and you have leaks. So pay attention to which valve you end up with because if you hit the wrong one, you'll have, you'll have issues. So here we can see the difference between the 70 thou and the 96 thou. The 70 thou jet is on the right, the 96 thou jet is on the left. So hopefully that was enough information to get you guys back on the road again. It's really critical, get your pressure, and get the valve size right in order to keep these things from leaking. So if you have any problems with your carburetors leaking or have had issues in the past, let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon.